Welcome back everybody, Kathy Arbor here, and today is Watercolor Tuesday. And this is what we did last week. Um, so I showed you how I go about doing character drawings um, with these little elves. So if you want to check out that video, it was last week, or after I'm done I'll put a little um, card up there in the corner that you can click on. Um, that was the week before, and just using regular leaves, tracing them, and then painting them. And these are some of the other elves that we did. I really have enjoyed doing these elves. Um, just spending time to get your imagination going again, and um, thinking up situations or um, a story behind the elf so you know uh, you know what expression to do them um, surroundings that type of thing and it really helps with the imagination to get going and you actually do create stories out of them <laughs> at least I do um, so this week uh, on the weekend I I did a another drawing. I don't know how many more of these are gonna I'm going to do. I, I might switch them up, maybe do one or two a month, and then the rest I'll do other things. Because not everyone likes elves. Hey Lisa! Good to see you. So since it's so close for the uh, Thanksgiving uh, in the United States, I thought I would do a harvest um, fairy <laughs> basically because these little guys gotta store up a bunch of fruit seeds roots all kinds of stuff for their winter um, because they can't go too far in the snow hey, hey Janet <laughs> Zandra so this is how my mind works so I'm thinking well okay so these little guys have to start um, scavenging for mm, leftover seeds, berries, crab apples, you know, that type of thing that they, they would have. I love elves and fairies, so just keep... <laughs> Thanks, Janet. So I thought, okay, so I'm going to have to do some kind of an elf harvesting. So I thought, okay, well, then probably it'd have to be berries or nuts or that, that type of thing, so... I have to do a tree limb of some sort. So I thought, why not crab apples? You know the ornamental crab apples that people have? You can't really do anything with the ornamental ones, but elves can. That's a pretty big apple for an elf. So there's my <laughs> drawing for the little elf or fairy, whatever you want to call them, imp. <laughs> a little imp and yes he could be harvesting or he could, could be getting ready to throw them at you sneaky little you're, tar you're the uh, target for him so he's practicing his, his aim <laughs> it's basically so however you want to look at it is he being a good little elf and or fairy and just picking a bunch of crab apples or is he actually using them as weapons? <laughs> now this one can be, I was looking at it today, and this one can be used for Christmas too if you wanted to. And you could have them sitting on a, a bough of um, pine needles and then maybe he's holding little bells or a string of lights, that type of thing. Uh, yes, he's naughty. <laughs> he's got that little impish look on his face and I gave him really big hands and feet <laughs> um, so these are the little crab apples he's, he's got um, wasn't it the, okay. yeah wasn't that great to see Jen that was a big surprise it was so awesome I'm so glad she's um, starting to feel 
a little bit better and um, is on the mend. <laughs> Naughtier the better. Yeah, I kind of like naughty myself, Janet, to, to be honest with you. I think there's... <laughs> There's more character in the little naughty elves than the good good little elves. So this is what we're going to do. Now I do have this on um, Google Drive for the members. If you just want to join for just the traceables that I have, it's $2.99 a month. And uh, you'll find all of the printables in the community members page. You just have to scroll down and you'll see the different um, links. So I thought, okay, so we're going to do crab apples. It's, it's fall. So the leaves are going to be probably tattered looking. Um, apple leaves usually are mm, probably a little more on the yellow, light green um, type of color. Uh, usually crab apples are kind of um, scarred or scabbed, what they call it. So they're green, more or less green, maybe a little bit of red in them, and they're and they're um, got marks on them. So I thought, okay, well, we'll, I think just so that he shows up, because he's going to have all this green on, around him, we'll make his... Um, little stockings, either black and white or orange and black or green and black. Something that's going to show up a little bit more. So I think I'll do those last just to see how things are going in the color of the leaves and stuff. Uh, I think I'll keep his skin probably more of a um, skin tone. You could color them whatever color you want. Um, a lot of, uh, oh, what's that guy? Xander, help me out. What's that guy's name that does all the fairy books? Um, Brian, can't think of his last name. He A lot of his little fairies and gnomes and stuff are kind of this um, purplish brown beige color. Hey Dorothy. So we'll start off by um, doing our leaves I think. So I have um, a couple brushes here. Actually this I, I have so many brushes I actually found this again. This is um, a number six liner by um, Mimic. And I believe, Xander, you gifted me this. And I do love it. It's uh, got a really nice point. It holds quite a bit of water, but uh, it's got a nice point once you... And it's very long, so you can do a lot of wash with it and still keep a nice point. So let's start off with his little um, vest here of a leaf. I'm just going to wet this paper where the leaf is. And this is watercolor paper that I'm doing this one on. Um, now what I'm going to do is probably cut it out once it's done and put it into my uh, book. Or I could also uh, scan it, reduce the size, and then just put a photocopy in. I'll see. Depends. Okay, so I think we'll probably keep his um, little vest. Probably the same color as the apples. Hey Brenda! If you have any questions just uh, put it in caps and if I don't see it there's quite a few people in chat that could 
probably help you out too. But normally I will see it. I'm going to add a little bit of Hensa Yellow by Core just to make it even yellower. I'm going to spray these. Let them get a little bit wet. And I've got quite a bit of water on my brush. And we can just more or less dab. You don't have to put the whole area in smoothly. Because they're old leaves, usually they're marked. There's some areas might be faded a little bit. Some areas would have um, brown on them. Maybe a little red here and there. Um, so don't put it in smooth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do most of my leaves this way. And then the second coat will be more... That's when you can put your other colors in by just doing dabs. Or, or actually, maybe I'll do some um, splattering too. Because a lot of times you see these little specks on the leaves from bugs and stuff. Just add a little bit. Do you want me to bring my it in more, or, or is it okay as it is? Can you see okay? <clears throat> Just let me know, because I can always uh, zoom you guys in a little more. The only problem with that is that you won't see as much of my palette. Okay, so I'm just trying to get these leaves in. So my water's already kind of got a green tinge to it, so I'm just going to use that. And just add a little bit more here and there of the colors. more here and there. Now if you notice some of the areas um, where there's dips in the leaves or they're overlapping, you can add a little bit more in there, those areas. This is the way you normally do watercolor is the lightest to the darkest. Use hat. fun thinking about, well, if I was an elf <laughs> or a fairy, what would I be using as clothes? What plant? Would it be a plant? Would, it, would I be hunting things to make into clothing? Would it be um, fur or Depends if you want your fairy to be a, a nice fairy that doesn't hurt anything, <laughs> or does it hunt? What would your fairy be? Alright, now I can 
go in and start adding or taking away too. Um, if you're taking away, just use a damp brush. Get a paper towel ready. In a little? Okay. That good? So if you're taking away, I'm thinking of highlights more or less. So on the top of his head, maybe you would want it almost white. So you just take your paper towel and just damp off some of, air, of those areas. You can always add maybe the tops of his shoulders here. Maybe a little bit on his chest because it would be sticking out. Um, right here maybe on this leaf. See how this is bowed a little bit? So right on here you'd probably have a little bit of a highlight on the leaf. Right there, it's coming towards me. Uh, let's see, maybe on the top part of this one here, just a little bit. And right here. Okay, so now let's uh, take Hair dryer, or hair dryer or heat gun, doesn't matter, and we'll dry this. And this is just um, a studio watercolor. It's not the expensive brand. It comes in a fat. I think they call it fat palette or something like that. So you get like 60 sheets in a... pack. And that's great for... if you're just um, playing along with it, that's great. Hey Colleen! Colleen, there's a uh, printable for this if you're wanting to color it. You don't have to use watercolor, just use water or colored pencil or whatever you want. So now let's do some accents on, the, on these leaves. So any of the edges that are turned, like here, it's turned over, it's probably going to be a little on the brown side because they're old, it's fall, and they're starting to wear out and look a little old. So this is a Raw Sienna by Daniel Smith. You can start out very light if you want and get darker. And I'm just going to put it over top of this green. Even though there's green on it, it will show. I'm just dabbing, basically. You can add them to wherever you want, wherever you think there might be a little bit of wear and tear on that leaf. Could be even in the center. Maybe you got some holes. Some right here.
a lot of times the the very ends of the leaves will be a little bit worn. If you're not sure, you can always look it up too. Follow a reference. If, but, you know, these are just fun to play with. You can download and print these as many times as you want, so it's not like you have to save it. You could do it all kinds of colors. You could make it more on the Christmas side. Change it up the way you want. Down the veining a little bit, maybe. Leaves are so easy to do. There's no wrong way of doing them. It's whatever you want, however you want to do it, whatever colors you want to use, just play with it. Oh, you did it like that for your squirrel? Awesome. Yeah, you just play with them. Um, just print this off a few times and, and do different ones, you know, and then you'll find what you like. Um, let's put a little more green. I'm going to go with a little bit of, let's see, Chazo green, I think. Let's try that. It's more of a yellow it's a little darker than what I've got here, but it'll, it would make a nice um, shading color. So, and leaves are usually blotchy anyway. Let's just play. See what you can do. What do you like in leaves? You could make it more, just wet it and drop it, the colors in, and let it do its own thing. That's fun to do, too. And sometimes you get some really awesome color combinations going. Follow the veins, and uh, usually that will work for you. These are fairly um, translucent colors too, so whatever you do, it's going to change the original color that you, you put on the last time. Oh, that's good, Xandra. You'll find out Friday. 
we'll all keep our fingers crossed that everything is good for you. Put a little more in there. You could also use a uh, colored pencil. I like doing that a lot. And then I think I'm just going to get some yellow here. Nice bright yellow. But watered down quite a bit. Let's see. And I'm just going to go over and just brighten those up a little bit with this yellow. Just gives them a little bit more oomph. <laughs> this guy here needs a little bit more definition on his hat. But we can always come in with a pen too, because we're going to use our markers or pens, whatever you have, to add a little bit more detail. Alright, so let's put in the branch. So I have some uh, burnt umber here. And I want to put a little bit of Payne's Gray, just the tip, and that'll gray it down a little bit. I don't want true brown brown per se. I like it more on the um, grayish brown side, kind of a muddy color for the um, branch. And I'm just going to be dabbing on the bottom part. Using the tip of my brush. A little bit of shadow there where he's sitting. Just a little few dabs and dots um, on the top part, not totally um, covered. And we'll come up back on there and uh, add some more to it. Bit of stems here. These are very, very simple. paintings. So sometimes, you know, simplicity is best. You don't have to get, you know, in, especially if you're going to be putting a lot of uh, detail in with pen. I'm going to make this side the shaded side. So just a little bit of shadow there. A little bit in here, shadow. Depends how, how much detail you want. But 
You know me, I'm a detail person. <laughs> I love detail. Since he's facing me, it'll probably be a little bit darker. <laughs> you got popcorn. I'm pretty sure you could do these, Colleen. There's not a whole lot of, of um, layers. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I think I want a little bit more of a gray, so I'm going to mix this um, Quinn Red, a little bit of that Payne's Gray. That'll give me kind of a purpley blue. And then I want to mix a bunch of water with it. So I don't I don't want it very thick, not very watery. And I'm just gonna paint over that white of the stem. Just a bit. Alright, I'm going to take some of this away. Let's put in mm, some Quinn Red again. And some Sienna. And I'm going to put a little Cerulean in there. Dull it down just a smidge. And then we have a nice color for skin. Let's see, yeah, that's pretty good. And you can make his skin whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be pink or peach. If you want them to have kind of a greenish tone, you can do that. This is a good way of learning watercolor too with these drawings. You just play. You don't have to worry about drawing them because they're already drawn for you. So you can print them out as many times as you want. You put a base coat on his little face here. Into his ears. Thanks, Colleen. All right, so these apples, these are crab apples. So they're going to be the kind of that lime green again. So I have this, just going to color these guys. Let's see. 
I'm going to put a lot of marks with pen in there. Um, I think I might just put a hint of this color I used for the face just in the top area of the apple. Doesn't have to be a lot, but just a smidgen. Just to add a little bit of color. Okay, now let's dry that and then we can go back over the top. Like I said, the, the crab apples are kind of generic. You, they don't have to be crab apples. You could make them into cherries, um, blueberries, all kinds of stuff. So do whatever you want. <laughs> could be holding up um, Christmas bells. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit more of, let's see, that Quinn Red. I want a little bit pinkier. And we're going to do his nose a little bit more on the pinky side. And then we can always add um, white for highlight. I'm just taking clean water on my brush and I'm just going to dab around that area to blend it in. So add a little bit of water on your brush, clean water, and then around the area you did and it'll soak into that area, but it won't leave a hard line. Gives them a nice little rosy cheek. Same with the nose. We can add a little white dot on the end of his nose. Am I get my sleeve in? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm always putting my sleeves in. And if you want to clean up those, do the same thing. Just add a little bit of water to your clean brush. You can clean up any edges you've gone over or hard edges you don't want. Let's see. Give this a little bit of highlight here, forehead. And then just at the very top of his cheek. I think I'm going to get a little bit of white there. I don't know if I can do it or not. You can always come in and fix things too. That's better. 
And there's a little face. So I want a little bit more shading around his eyes, so we can add a little bit more of that Quin Red again. And a little bit of the Sienna in it. And a tad of blue, just to dull it down. And then we can go just at the side of his nose and his, his eye in here. And where his little cheek is, we can put some in there, little dimples. And under his chin also can be darker. I'm just more or less dabbing because it's a very small area. But it does make a difference. And let's see, around the top part of his hat. And in his ear. I'm going to put a little bit in here around where the apple is. Just to dab a little bit. Just to have a bit of a shadowed area where the apple is. And underneath his arm here can be darker. fingers might be a little darker thanks Brenda and there's his face so far okay so what color actually I think I'm gonna take some Pyro red, a little bit of pile of red. And I'm going to put it just in the tips of his ears. So a lot of times when light's shining through skin, it's got this really cool glow. And it's, um, Sometimes it's hard to get. I'll show you a picture of what I mean. Where did I put that? Let me think. It's in my... Just hold on. Yep, yeah, found it. I cleaned my whole area up so I actually know where stuff is. I'll show you what I mean. This isn't paint but it's um, colored pencil. Mm. Yeah. But see the ear? It's got that I don't know if 
bright orangey pyro it's not really showing too much it's a glow of his skin so it's not necessarily this can be a different color than what your face is same with your nose so because the light's shining on his ear you're going to see the blood flow in the ear Those are the kinds of things that I like um, looking at. <laughs> I don't know why, I just do. You know, I haven't done enough watercolor to really um, play with it a whole lot. because Watercolor is fairly new for me. I haven't been doing it that long. Um, but I do enjoy it, must say. It's a very interesting um, medium, totally different than anything else. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> awesome idea. Yeah, I'll have to remember that. You could do a snowball fight. Yeah. Let's see. What color socks? Should I do them in black and white? What do you think? Black and white um, pants? Black and white is always good, yeah. Usually you can't go too wrong with some black and white. It's like a little black dress. <laughs> I don't think I have, maybe I do. Let me check, I might have black paint. Yes, I do. Well, we'll use some gouache. <laughs> Why not? You can mix it up. Or in the kitchen baking cookies. <laughs> or snatching cookies. Okay. This is gouache paint. Well, actually, it's called it's called um, poster um, paint. It's what they originally used um, with uh, illustrators. Is they started with poster paint. This is too big. Let's use a thinner brush. Now I could use a colored pencil too, if you don't want to use this. But you have to be a very... Or if you have um, brush markers, and I do have those too, I could probably get those out. You know the Zig Clear, what is it, Zig Clean Brush Watercolor Markers? I always forget about those, and they are beautiful watercolors, but again, you put them away and you forget.
made a fairly small brush for this type of work. These brushes from Rosemary and Company are great for this type of work, for small detail, because they don't let out a lot of paint, which is nice. And they got a short bristle, so they're easier to control. So I like that. And they, she, she just doesn't have um, just for watercolor. She's got them for every type of medium, oil, acrylic with. They are nice brushes and they're not that badly priced. I was quite surprised. Now she does have her really high line, like sable and that type of thing, but even those aren't really too badly priced. I've seen worse. And they came right away, which was a shocker. Didn't hard, I think they came in two weeks. So that was great. Hey, Teresa. We've had some nice weather. That's good. We're snow. We've got snow now. It's not like cold, cold. It's more or less a wet snow, which I don't care for. I find wet snow is, it feels colder to me. It kind of goes right to the bone. Affects my arthritis. Kind of I like these seasons. I do like the seasons. It's, the only thing is winter could be a little shorter. <laughs> be nice if spring was actually here and not snow. We usually get snow in May or not May, um, March. Sometimes some pretty good storms. I would like to see spring in May, in March. We've gotten snow in May also, though. Just how it is. There's his little <laughs> leotards or whatever they are. Mm, I don't think I need this paint is really good. I really like it. And you use so little of it. It's that um, poster paint by Shinhan. <laughs> really good. I like them. Um, what color socks should we do? Do the little eyes. Black.
I was able to paint along with your orchid, but I'm not that good yet on oh, the other things. Oh, just try it, Teresa. That's all you, all you need to do is try. Red socks? Turquoise socks. <laughs> of course, Colleen. <laughs> Um, I think the red would be too heavy. Turquoise might work. A light turquoise, maybe. It all comes with practice, and and you know, I don't do it for you to compare. I do it to give you ideas on how to do things. So I know it's hard not to compare your work with other people, but if you can. Try and find a way of enjoying the process of learning. Like you did when you were kids. You know how you were so excited to learn how to do something? You didn't care how it looked. It was the doing that was the fun. And if you can try and get that way of thinking, then it it's a whole lot easier to do stuff. Um, you're not um, comparing yourself. Then you're you're having fun with the process, with with um, seeing what you can do. So these are just steps in showing you how I go about doing them. Um, you may find when you're doing it doesn't work for you, but don't give up right away. Uh, nothing comes easy for most people. Most people have to work at it. There's the odd person that can do things right off the bat, but they're, I find, gifted. So, but really, I, well, for me anyways, doing all these things, I do it because I love to do it. I love creating. I, I like seeing what I can accomplish, learning how to do things that I haven't done before, and um, enjoying it. I've done lots of, lots of stuff that didn't turn out but I learned quite a bit. And then you just try it again. Your paper pills? Could be your paper. Um, if you're just using a like a, a ninety pound watercolor or a sketch paper, you do have to make sure you dry a lot in between layers because it will peel. So that's not necessarily your fault in in how you're doing it. It's just that your your paper can't handle that type of 
wetness. And that, uh, that takes practice too in, um, when you're working with that type of paper to understand you have to dry things more. You can't have sopping wet. It just, it just won't, the paper just won't behave properly. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. Okay, let's try. Okay, I have a cobalt teal here. Let's see. Add a little bit of green or yellow to it just to change it up a little bit. And we'll make it fairly light. I got my sleeve in it. I don't have good clothes anymore. All my clothes have paint on them. Pretty much all of them. <laughs> I have to get up and get some more clothes. Darker inside. It could be like the teenagers nowadays and has one sock that's different than the other. <laughs> Can you see that? Where kids wear the two different socks. Darker on the inside. That's cute. That's funny about paint. Paint clothes. All my clothes have paint too. I just bought black outfit that I can wear to in public with grocery shopping. Nope. Yep. <laughs> and I know. <laughs> Kids don't say anything to me anymore. I end up at their house and I paint on. <laughs> well, let's darken these apples a little bit. So I'm going to take some of that green uh, Ozzo gold. Just where they're overlapping here. Be a little bit of a... Oh, I think I need it darker. Uh, put a little bit of green Appetite Genuine with it. Just to darken it. Dark enough. And in the centers here, it'll be a little bit darker. And down below. Round things. So you gotta think of the roundness of the apple. Be dark on the bottom. Let's 
soften the edge. And then we're going to have to do his wing. I have his wing back here and we're going to continue with the Xandra paint of Sun Gold. I love that stuff. Xandra, do you have any of it in your shop? Some, someone can put Xandra's shop up there if they were interested in this Sun Gold. Just sparkles. Like, I love it. And you can still see through it, but the um, mica in it is so fine. I think it's probably um, makeup grade mica. That's why it's so fine. And then we can always put some line work in the wings still. A little bit of a wing there showing. There. See how it can I make it shine? There it shines. It's so cool. I love it. Uh, it comes from Germany. Oh, I bet it's the same place my brother dealt with his glass beads. He got his stuff from Germany too. And I remember uh, he sent me a whole packet of samples and one of them was um, commercial grade what they put in makeup and stuff like that. <laughs> I do not know how to use watercolor. Well, finger paint, whatever, you know, do you. That's what I don't, if you're not comfortable with it, I didn't do uh, watercolor for years and years and years because I was wasn't sure of it. wasn't uh, I was almost scared of it. To tell you the truth. Um, which way? I can't see my this way. So. Yeah, you just do what you want to do. Soften this line up a little bit. Yeah, put a little bit more on there. A little darker. Right on the bottom. I know I'm getting fussy, but that's what I like to do. Dark in here. I'm gonna put some line work in it too. I think I'm gonna darken this area here. It's kind of like flipped over leaf. Yeah, a little bit of some darker areas. Mm. 
some spots from the bugs. Yeah, the rose gold is really nice too. I used it for, um, I think, the buckle of, some, of one of the other ones. Okay, let's try that and then we'll use some pen work. See if this is gonna work or not. I kind of like to stick with a brown sepia. We'll see. Um, and we'll just do the. I don't know if it's gonna be enough to show up or not. Uh, a little bit. We'll see. I don't think this is, is it working. It's very fine. Some dots. on the crab apples. It's a very fine brush or brush pen. It's a one. And just doing some patching just to darken the under part of this apple. Just gives it a little, I'll show you in a minute, a little bit more shadow without um, covering it completely. very fine. Same with the leaves, the veinings of the leaves you can do with this. It's very fine but kind of looks nice. Mm 
you can put holes, that type of thing in there. edge in and the leaf again. Just kind of reinforce areas that are um, not dark enough. I think my favorite size nib is a three. This is good for eyelashes, that type of thing. Um, very fine areas. But I don't know where I put my threes. Somewhere. I'm going to put a bunch of dots because you'd have mm, some bigger ones, some smaller ones little areas that are kind of they get these rings in some of the leaves especially maples I don't know if you've seen them it's kind of like a fungus that comes on them you do notice it in a, a lot more um, in, in the fall I like to outline some um, patches of the leaves too, that looks cool, of um, where you place different colors or different hues. If you outline them with a very fine pen, it, it kind of looks cool. I'll show you in a minute. It's not necessarily what it would look like, but I like it. This gives it a little something extra to um, look at. And this pen is waterproof too. And you can have lots of little marks on the bark. Uh, maple trees, or maple, apple trees, have a lot of m little marks on their bark. Uh, they also have these little white specks, depending on <clears throat> how old your tree is. So just mark up your... area. A bunch of little squiggles. Do his wing. I'll just put some of the lines in. And all I did was look up dragonfly wings and look at the pattern. Then you can put your pattern in your wing. 
doesn't have to be exact. And some dragonflies have different patterns too. <clears throat> hey Lisa! You guys talking about paint on your clothes? folds in the leaf bit here. Little splits in the leaf. Think of stuff that you would see in nature, um, depending on the time of year that you're wanting it to be in. So, because it's fall, these leaves are ratty and tatty. They're worn out. They have splits in them. They've got spots and chew marks. You just add some here and there. Don't put a whole lot in. Just a few. Some little dots in where they're insect bites or whatever they are. Holes, maybe. Could be. And some of those marks are outline the bits and pieces. I just like that look. I don't know why, but I think it looks cool. Can't go wrong with a fall leaf putting a bunch of marks on. There. Alright, we'll put some shadow areas in the sepia around his, the bottom parts of his arm and his hand. And maybe around the bottom part of his nose. Just emphasize that darkness a little bit. And the corners of his smile, that mischievous smile of his. You could, <laughs> there, I got hair in his ear. <laughs> Why not? We're going to put hairs in his ear. <laughs> They're fine. Part rabbit. <laughs> Just a little bit. He has a little bit of hair on his eyebrow. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just mm. straighten the eyes out a little bit best to do that with pen. And under his chin should be a little bit darker. Just make sure you wipe your pen off. 
clean it up. Sometimes it picks up some of that paint color. So you have to rub the pen on something a little bit here and there. ear. Be darker in here. Just add a little bit of hashed marks. A little bit more detail where that leaf is overlapping just to shade it up a bit. I don't know if I can get enough on from this small. It's not bad. Should be a little darker though. Let's finish up these leaves. Marks. Thanks, Dot. It's fun. Just play. See what you can do. There's little socks. I think I need to do a little bit more painting on these guys. Let's see. A little more. Maybe add some blue to it, darker blue. To the inside here, just to make it darker. Some of these shadows.
All right, so now I think I'm going to get some white. I got a white pen here. Thanks, Kathy. So we'll add some highlights in the apple. And I would just add a few dots on the tree. Apple trees have these weird dots on their branches. So put a few of those in. Need a little bit of a highlight on some of the limbs. And, oh, I didn't finish that guy. Didn't finish his hat. Just adding a few of these vein marks. And then some of those squiggles. Better. A little darker. And on the tops of his ears, maybe a little bit of white, a little bit of highlight, and on his uh, little nose here. And I'm just going to put a smidgen on his cheek. Forehead. All right. Just at the very top of the sock. And some of these folds. 
in his sock. Can I have a few little highlight marks? And is the pigment of the paint, is it the pigment of the paint why you pencil drawing does not show through? Um, well, this here is actually uh, watercolor paper, and I actually put it through my um, laser printer. So I scanned my painting, or my drawing, and then I put it through um, my printer. My printer has a, a manual feed for heavier paper, and that's the... For this type of art, you want your line drawing to show through somewhat. Now you can make, uh, on your printer, you could also make it a gray color, so lower your density. Um, but you still want to put some kind of marks with ink on it. So if you don't like having your drawing showing through, then make it very, very faint. Depends. Some some artists like it. Some people don't. Um, it's really a preference thing. What you like. Let's see. Three. I'm just gonna clean up his leg with this marker. black marker. So I like seeing the line work, the drawing. Everyone's different. This is just the black now under there. Just a little more contrast. I like contrast. So I'm just going to do a few little lines in this black. Just on the very bottom part here. Where I think it might need it. I can hear by his seat. You gotta get enough contrast um, in your paintings. Doesn't matter what you're doing, drawing. Um, painting, color pencil. If you don't have enough co contrast with color, the hue, different hues, then your work kind of looks flat. So the more you can um, use contrast, the better.
It doesn't have to be a lot. Sometimes just a little stroke here and there is all you need. Let's do this up in here. I think that's it. I think that's good. maybe this one right here all right there is a little imp either harvesting or throwing crab apples at you <laughs> whatever you want to make it whatever story you want to give it So I hope you'll uh, download the drawing, the traceable for you on the membership page and uh, see what you can do with them. Play with it in watercolor, color pencil, whatever you want to play with it in. Just have some fun with them. Print them out a few times. You may want to just practice on leaves with one or maybe you want to try a different color. Just work with it and see, learn from what you're doing so you can find out what you want to, what style you want to do your um, last painting with. <laughs> you think he's throwing them? Yeah, he kind of looks like that little mischievous <laughs> throwing them, doesn't he? All right, so I'll let you guys go, and I hope you had a good time today. And if you got any more suggestions, let me know. Leave a comment in the comments area. And um, before you leave, make sure you press the like button or the dislike button whatever suits you they both do the same thing and we'll see you on Thursday and we'll be doing a acrylic painting Thursday uh, probably fall oriented if you've got some ideas for that leave a comment so have a fantastic evening and uh, we'll see you later bye for now